Amen. My heart is, go ahead and have a seat, everyone. My heart is full. How about yours? What a blessing. And we've got a long ways to go. Amen. Well, tonight we are going to continue in our theme for the year, which is sing. And so all this year at Nights of Worship, we have been looking at these great, powerful songs from the Bible. And so tonight, we're going to look at Psalm 33. And Psalm 33 is a song for the family, a song for the family of God. And so I want to ask you all a question, though, before we jump right in, is what was your family song when you were growing up? Like, what was that song when it came on the radio, or you put it on the stereo, and it just got you up? Your siblings, your family just got up, and you just started singing. All right? Well, I want to share my family song. So growing up in western North Dakota, my brothers and I, we had a song. And my dad, when we were driving in the station wagon, all four of the boys in the back, no seatbelts back then, and he would take the eight-track cassette, he would put it in, and here's the song he would play that got us singing. I can't sing it, but I'm going to give you the lyrics. You join in when you feel like singing. Ready? Almost heaven. West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah River, life is old there, older than the trees, younger than the mountains, growing like a breeze. Shoreline, you ready? Country roads take me home to the place I belong, North Dakota. <laughs> oh, West Virginia. Uh, we love that song, and you clearly love that song, and generations still love that song. No, there we go. We got a couple of shakes, but tonight we're going to sing a song that we all should love because it comes from God's word, and as I said, it's Psalm 33, and psalm, as we know, means song, and so what I've done tonight is I've invited my family to come up, and we would like to read for you as a family to our family this song, Psalm 33. And we'll have it on the screens for you. If you have your Bibles, you can open your Bibles as well. And here we go, Psalm 33, beginning in verse 1. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him on the ten-stringed lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, their starry host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into jars. He puts the deep into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. The Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the peoples. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever, the purposes of his heart through all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. From heaven the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place he watches all who live on earth. He forms the hearts of all who considers everything they do. No king is saved by the size of army. No warrior escapes by his strength. A horseman is his hope for deliverance. Despite all its great strength, it cannot save. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is is in his unfailing love to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. We wait, we wait in hope, hope for the Lord. He, he is, is our, our help and our shield. shield. In, in him our hearts, hearts rejoice, rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. name. May, May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, Lord even as, as we put, put our hope, our hope in, you. in you. So my wife Amy, my son, our son Jake, his wife Kari, and their children, London, Maddox, and Audrey. What a great joy it was for us tonight to be able to share God's word with you. So Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. 
your eternal word, Lord, that touches us, that is alive and active, and it penetrates deeper than a double-edged sword. And so, Lord, tonight, as only your word can do, through the power of your Holy Spirit, would you speak to us? Would you challenge us? Would you transform us? And we pray this, Jesus, in your name, amen. Well, amen. Well, every song, as we know, has a setting. In Psalm 33, the setting is this. It's God's children have gathered to celebrate and sing of God's faithfulness. This song was a public declaration of God's faithfulness to his people. And it was intended that they would sing it together as one family. It was a family song. And it would be from the youngest to the oldest. And they would all come together and they would sing this song together. And it was this. It was an expression of thanks to God, but it also was an extension of hope looking forward into the future. And that's why these people, that was the setting for this song. And the central message for this song is this. This song declares that God is faithful, that God is powerful, he is trustworthy, praiseworthy for all generations in all circumstances. Did you get that? That God is powerful and that he is faithful and that he's trustworthy and he's praiseworthy in all circumstances for all generations. That's what this song declares. And we need to embrace that truth, Shoreline. And every song we know has a singer. Now, this is one of the very few psalms in the book of Psalms that has no one attributed as the author. This psalm is considered what they call an orphan psalm. And what do we know about orphans to God? That God has a special place in his heart for orphan, or orphans. And I believe that this psalm is one of those. And since there's no author, we know that God is the ultimate author of Scripture And that by extension, then, this is our song. This is our family song that we, too, can declare the truths of this. And so as we reflect on the lyrics of Psalm 33, how should we respond as a church, as a people, as children of God? I think number one, really, I want to give you three encouragements tonight. Number one is this. We rejoice and praise him with a new song and shouts of joy. Did you get that in verse 1? Sing joyfully to the Lord. Verse 3, sing to him a new song and shout for joy. See, God delights in songs of praise. And he especially delights when we sing those songs when we're walking through difficulty or we're facing challenges. But yet we still find it in our hearts to sing praises to him. And so no matter what we're walking through, God delights in that. And I want to share a video with you of a little four-year-old. It's our grandson, Silas. And I want to share this video with you. I want to see if you can pick up the lyrics that he's singing. Uh, there's peace. I am in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Now I am in the darkness, And so you in case you don't speak four-year-old fluently, we put the font up there. Listen to that. That is who you are, yeah. Just declaring praise, he's just singing away. Look at that. And as much as that delights a grandfather's heart, think about how that touches his heavenly father's heart. Because what you may not know is when he was singing these words, his family was transitioning from off at Air Force Base, Nebraska, to Beale Air Force Base in California. And their housing situation was up in the air. And they were living in a hotel. And there he is, just singing that song. Now, where did he hear that song? He heard his mommy and daddy singing that song. He probably heard it on the road from Nebraska to California, playing on the radio. And so I want to ask you tonight, Shoreline, how can you fill your heart and home with songs of praise and a renewed sense of joy? How can you do that so that your heart is filled like that little four-year-old? And that you can declare songs of praise. And so when you came in tonight, someone may have given you one of these. This is actually the summer songs of praise praise for Shoreline Church that our team has put together. And we've got a QR code. You can actually take your phone out right now. I'm giving you permission. You can scan that QR code and you will be able to take, you'll take it to a list of worship songs 
that we sing here at Shoreline Church that you can download, that you can fill your home, that you can fill your cars, your trucks, and allow that to fill your hearts, and you can sing those songs of praise. And in that, it brings delight to your Heavenly Father and fills your homes and your hearts as well. And so my second encouragement is this from Psalm 33, is that we remember and recount his unchanging faithfulness and unfailing love. God's unchanging faithfulness. Verse 4 says, For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. Verse 5 said, The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. And I love the way 18, verses 18 and 19, but the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. And so as we reflect on these words, we remember that Jesus himself is the living word and that he is faithful and just and that Jesus himself came with unfailing love for us and he lived a perfect life, and he died his sacrificial death on the cross and rose in glory on the resurrection and ascended on high and now is interceding on our behalf because of his unfailing love for you and for me. And we also remember that Jesus is our living hope. He's our living hope. And that no matter what we're walking through, that we can look forward to what Jesus has promised to each one of us who place our faith in him. Eternal life with God, Jesus. And so that's what this reminds us. But also this song reminds us that we're not only to remember, but to recount, to recount God's faithfulness and his unfailing love. And how do we recount? Well, recount simply means this. We share with others. We tell others and so my question for you tonight, Shoreline, is what is one step this summer, what is one step that you can take to share your story and share his story with your family and friends? For some of you have been walking with Jesus for decades, and maybe you've never taken the time to actually sit down and write out your journey to Jesus and your journey with Jesus. And some of you are just new believers. We, on Sunday, we had eight new believers and 22 children raised their hand to Jesus. 30 new brothers and sisters in Christ from this last Thursday. And so one of the first things we're encouraging them to do is write out your testimony, to write out your journey to Jesus. And then we're encouraging you and we're encouraging them and we're encouraging those online to share your story, God's story with someone this summer. That's our challenge. Someone who doesn't yet know Jesus needs to hear your story and how Jesus has changed your life for eternity. Amen? And the third encouragement is this. We renew our commitment to fully trust and hope in him. Now, this song was written somewhere between 2,500 years and 3,000 years ago. But as it was back then, I suspect there were a lot of those who sang that song back then who were walking through some pretty difficult times. Sickness, plague, separation, loneliness, anxiety, grief. But they would sing these words, this song, they would sing it together. And they would sing it as a renewal of their commitment to God, the trusting in him, hoping in him. And that's why they would sing it. And as they sang it, they would sing. Families would sing. And as one family, they would sing. And they would not only be declaring their trust and confidence in God, but they would be encouraging one another. Because imagine if you looked and you saw your neighbor and you knew a little bit about the challenges your neighbor was walking through and your neighbor was praising God and singing songs, declaring their trust in God. 
And over here, you know, here's your cousin and their family, and they're walking through really difficult times, and they're singing and they're praising to God. That would bring you encouragement. And that's the joy of singing this song together. So tonight, I'm not going to ask you to sing this song together. Tonight, as a family, I want to invite you to read these words, to declare these words together as we renew our commitment to fully trust in God and to place our hope in him and him alone. And so beginning in verse 20, let's read these words together. And I'm going to invite you to read it out loud here on campus and online. Verse 20, we wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him, our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. And so, Lord Jesus, that's our prayer tonight. Jesus, that we commit these words, we commit our lives, we commit our families to you, Jesus. You are the one that rescued us, and you are the one that walks with us, and that you are the one that calls us, encourages us, equips us, and strengthens us. And in you, Jesus, we find joy. And Jesus, in that joy, we continue to worship you, and we thank you. In your name we pray, amen. 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 Well, I'm joined by pastors Keith and Brandon and Roy, and tonight it is our distinct honor and privilege to be able to pray for families and individuals that will be leaving Shoreline Church in the next three months. And they might be for different reasons. It could be military, it could be our students, or it could be somebody in the business world, but God is calling you out of this area and moving you into another area. But one of the great joys we have as a church here at Shoreline Church is we are a sending church. And we recognize because of our unique location that we get to have families for a season. And we wish we could hold on to you a lot longer. But God has other plans for you. And we trust him. This is that trust and that hope. We trust him that he is the one that is sending you. And so tonight, it is our honor and privilege for us to be able to pray over you and also for our family to pray over you. And so in a moment, we're going to invite you to stand. I want you to be strong and courageous and stand and allow us to pray over you. Would that be all right, Shoreline Church, to pray for those that are leaving tonight? Because with that, I'm going to ask Pastor Brandon if he'll start us. Yeah, I have the amazing privilege to be a pastor to students and to young adults. And this year we graduated around 15 students that are going to be going on to their next phase of life to leave this church and to leave this area, their home, and to really start a new adventure. We've already had some students that are already working at camps that have already launched into this next season of life. Uh, But it's such an honor for us to invest in their life while they're here. And our prayer as we go into this in a second, is that they would find a new church, they'd find a new body to serve with, to love, and to grow with. So if you're in this room right now and you're a young adult or you're a student in the next three months who is moving on to the next thing, I would ask you to stand the same online if you're joining us. And in the next three months, you're moving on to the next thing. Just be with us. And if you're in the courtyard, it's a beautiful night. We'd love for you to stay in and join us as well. But for the next three months, if you are one of those young adults or high school students who are moving on to the next phase, Just stand and we'll pray for you. Heavenly Father, we want to pray, God, for every student and young adult, students that are already gone, young adults, CSU and B students who have already moved on to the next phase of life, Jesus. We just pray for their hearts. God, it was such a privilege to have them here with us at Shoreline Church. God, our prayer is that they fall deeply in love with you, God, as they launch into their new, just this new area of life. God, I pray that they would always remember your love and your faithfulness. God, the church is such a beautiful thing, and the enemy will do all he can to try to take them away from it. And so, God, I just pray that they wake up with a deep hunger for you, God, that they dive deep into your word, that they continue a great prayer life, and they wake up every day with a worshipful heart. Be with them as they move on to this next phase of life. We pray also in your name. Amen. 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 Uh, if uh, you are here in the military uh, from uh, seasons coming in, seasons going, 
Uh, so many of our military community have found this is a place of refuge for them, a home that they could find away from home. And so if in the next three months uh, you're graduating from NPS or you're finishing up at DLI, uh, whatever that arrangement is, or serving another capacity in our, our military in the Monterey Peninsula, I just invite you to stand, whether online or here in the worship center, that we might pray for you. Lord, for 30 years, uh, I've had NPS families and DLI students that have, that have come into our church settings and have provided just tremendous friendships and great partnerships, and we're grateful for that. Whether they've come here on a country road or Highway 68, they've found that this is home and a place that they belong. But time comes to an end, Lord, that they move on. You, uh, you have ordained that they are reassigned to new locations. And uh, even though we have enjoyed seasons together and we need to say goodbye, they're still part of the Shoreline family. Lord, I pray that they never forget that. But they're also part of your family. And as they go, you go with them. And we just pray that you take them to new locations, new horizons, new beginnings, new church families, new assignments where they can share with their friends and neighbors your mercy, your grace, your love for them and for those they come in contact with. And I pray that you give them a new song to sing where you take them next. Your hand a blessing upon them just as your arms of protection are around them. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And while we have a lot of military and students that come leave this place, we also know that there are others that leave for other reasons. Jobs take them elsewhere. They seek to go find housing somewhere else or family in different places. And so if you are one of those who are leaving in the next few months who is, are not a student or military, we would love to pray for you as well. And if you would be willing, we'd love to have you stand both here in the worship center, out in the courtyard, and you online. Heavenly Father, as we say goodbye so often to people here at Shoreline, um, we know that it's not a permanent goodbye, but until we see them again in your presence. Uh, Lord, we pray that as these individuals and families leave from this place, Lord, we pray as we know you do, that you will go before them, that you will prepare a place, you'll prepare work and community and church for them to, to grow in their faith, to continue to 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 serve and to be part of the greater body of Jesus worldwide. And so, Father, we thank you for the time that we've had with these families, and we look forward to what you're going to do with them in their new locations. And we pray for them in Jesus' name. Amen. We talk about being a family, and it's not just words. Like, it really is what we feel that we are a family, not just family here within Shoreline Church, but the greater family of God, those of us who have a relationship with Jesus. And we take a time during our night of worships to celebrate communion, which is really based on what the Last Supper was with Jesus and his disciples. We can read throughout the Gospels, but specifically I want to read um, for Matthew um, what it says, and it says, on the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? And he gives them some instructions. He tells them to go into the city and gives them a, a few little things that they're going to see, and they're going to find some people, and they're going to give them a location, and then they're going to sit down and have a meal. Most often in our tradition, we participate in communion in the church setting. But the reality is that we can do this anytime we are with fellow believers. As we're having a meal together, as we're eating chips and salsa, we can say this is a moment for us to remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. Now, communion is a sacrament that's within the Christian tradition. So if you have given your life to Jesus, if you've accepted the sacrifice of Jesus' death, and resurrection for your sins. This is for you. For some of you, this isn't where you are right now. You haven't yet decided to accept that gift of Jesus. And then this isn't for you because this isn't a remembrance of what he did for you yet. But we hope that soon it will be. 
Here in, in the worship center, you should have gotten a small cup. And if you haven't, please raise your hand and somebody will come by and give it to you. One side has a cracker and another side has some juice. We always say open up the cracker side first because uh, you don't want to have a big spill when you flip it over to get the cracker out. Then if you're at home, we'd love to have you grab something for your elements as well. Well, so Jesus is reclining at the table with the disciples. They're having a meal. A meal that's traditionally remembering back to when Jesus, or to when God had delivered the people. And they make a sacrifice, typically, of of a Passover lamb. And Jesus, this day, says something a little bit different. He, uh, He tells them that he's the new sacrifice. We read in Mark 14, verse 22, while they were eating, Jesus took the bread And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body. And, you know, they're having a meal. So they're eating their food, and they had probably a a, a wide array of different foods. But Jesus, in this moment, he was saying, You are thinking about a lamb being the sacrifice, that thing which is going to pay the price for your sins. But he said, It's now different. He said, Now this bread, this is my body, this is broken for you for the forgiveness of your sins. He's saying it's different. And, and if we can put ourselves in the position of those disciples at a time, this is all new to them. They hadn't seen this before. This isn't what Passover was about. And Jesus is saying, but it is what Passover is about. And to us today under a new covenant, this is what it's about. It's about Jesus' broken body for us. For each of us would accept that gift. And so as we've been talking about family, we thought how great for us as a church family, both here on campus and at home, to partake in communion together. So as we take our bread, let us do so remembering the broken body of Jesus. As the disciples that day were going to be looking ahead to their Savior, giving up his life for them shortly. Then he took the cup. And he said, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for you. He said to them, truly I tell you, I will not drink of it again. I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Jesus was telling his disciples that day, and the message carries on to us today. That this juice, while there's only juice, it represents Jesus' spilled blood for us. The new covenant, it's a, a new agreement between God and us. That Jesus was giving up his life for each of us so that we could have eternal life with Jesus. And I know all so often it can just become a, a routine that we do. Oh, there's the bread and there's the juice. But today... Today, can we take it a little bit deeper and truly reflect on that sacrifice that Jesus made? The disciples didn't yet know because it hadn't happened. But as they're thinking, what is he talking about? What is this new covenant? Today, we know what it is. Can we remember as we drink together the wonderful sacrifice of Jesus' death for us? passage in the book of Mark ends with when they had sung a hymn they went out to the Mount of Olives I love that picture of after remembering the broken body and the broken blood that they sung together and then they went out together as a family, as a unit as one as we go from this part of our service into singing, we invite you to to join in in remembrance of God's love demonstrated in Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection.
and let us sing with, with all we've got to our Father in heaven. And I'd love to pray as we go to that. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for a love so great that you sent Jesus to give up his life for us. I thank you for this community of your body, the family of God that you've assembled. I thank you that we have an opportunity to come together, to worship together, to encourage one another, to share life together. Lord, you have blessed us beyond words, and we thank you. And may our songs to you be a joyful noise to your ears. We give you this time in Jesus' name.